All right, internet. Today, writers, I want to talk about Twitter. Specifically, I want to tell you the story about how I first joined Twitter and how it made me completely miserable. You have to understand that when I first started Twitter, there was this huge pressure to be building your platform, to be trying to maximize your followers because that's what you use to sell books. In fact, there were several guides on Twitter about how to maximize your followers counts and they usually went something like this. Step right up and come on down. You get the chance to try and win 10,000 followers. All you have to do is like, share, subscribe, and tag six other people while answering these five questions with a GIF. I dove in and I played the game. All of it. Follow Fridays, follow backs, automating your tweets with TweetDeck, posting animal pictures, trying to cover. I did it all. There was just one problem. I was completely miserable. My timeline became nothing but follow games, automated posts of buy my book. It got to the point where I could recognize the three common pre-made templates that people used to pitch their book. People were posting automatically every hour, hawking their books about writing, and that seemed to be the only kind of books they write. It felt like I was in a room full of people shouting followers, 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 without actually having any interactions. It was awful, and Twitter became a chore. I dreaded going in and working every day by trying to find a ton of people to follow and follow back and monitoring who didn't follow me back. And you just, it was, it was... It was exhausting. So I quit. I mean, I didn't completely quit Twitter, although I was very tempted, but I did go through my follow list and start purging people. Nothing but scheduled by my book tweets, gone. Only long lists of people to follow and nothing else, gone. DMs pitching me your book, gone. I cleaned house. I literally purged hundreds of people that I followed. I also muted many, many, many more people. At the end of this cleaning house, I had gone from over 1,500 followers to maybe a tenth of that. And I made one small change when it came to who I followed. I looked for people who were interesting, people who were nice. Did they post interesting pictures about their pets that made me smile? Did they tell interesting stories? Then I would chat with them and I would interact with them and we would have interesting conversations. That kind of back and forth was really the foundation of actual relationships. And something wonderful happened. It became a place with friends, with people that I actually care about, people who I want to see what's going on in their lives, people who I want to help out if they're down. I've now got friends that I've traded tea with, that I've mailed presents to, that I've gotten postcards from. These are people who are sincere friends, some of whom I've actually finally gotten to meet at comms, and it has been wonderful. My boss, who works in a marketing department, once told me that the key to marketing is really just relationships. And I do genuinely think that's true. That's why I've gone on this soapbox so many times. Because that's what this obsession with followers means. Your follower count is just a number. When you're actually starting to worry about the people behind those numbers, you get so much more interesting and diverse relationships. And those relationships are key. You build them off of being sincere and having nice interactions with them. And there, quality is so, so much more important than quantity. I would rather have 200 close friends on Twitter who are looking out for me and who I can cheer for and root for than 20,000 faceless followers that I don't know who they are and they don't know who I am. Because that core group of people is going to be people who's going to cheer for you through the thick and thin and who can grow with you. And that's, that's really what everyone needs. Not just writers, but everyone in a community needs. And this can become a viable support network for that. 
This is where am writing Twitter sometimes misses the mark because there's on Fridays giant follow Friday lists where there's nothing but 10 or 20 names one after the other. I don't know who these people are. I don't know anything about them. I saw one post the other day that was saying, hey, I want to support writers. If you have less than 30,000 followers, just comment and I'll retweet you and follow back. 30,000 followers. You can't have meaningful interactions with a tenth of that audience. And look, if people want to maximize their follower count because it brings them joy, by all means, do what you enjoy. Do what makes you smile. But I worry that when people put the focus on this, especially in the writing communities, as well-meaning as they are, it makes people new to the community feel like they should be doing it this way. It makes them feel bad if they don't have a thousand or five thousand or ten thousand followers because they feel like they're doing it wrong. And you're not. It's okay if you don't want 5,000 or 10,000 followers. That makes me sad. Writing can be such a lonely activity, and I don't want people to feel alone. Twitter can be such a wonderful place to build that support network so that when times do get more difficult for you as a writer, you have that to fall back on. It's just you have to use the tool differently than how all the popular hashtags imply you should be. That's it. That's all I have for this week. This is a soapbox I have gotten on so many times in many long threads on Twitter, and I finally said, all right, I'm just going to make a video about this so that I can simply reference it whenever I need to because it happens and it comes up a lot. What about you all for this week? What social media platforms do you actually use and enjoy? Do you use Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, something else? I confess I'm really wanting to learn Instagram and don't quite get how it works yet, so I, I'm still figuring out, I, I'm just curious what everyone else uses. Let me know down below in the comments, and I'd be curious to hear and get back to you. If you have any questions for me, you, like always, can find me on Twitter, as case in point, the name of this video. I'm there entirely too much. I'm at BowtieWriter, and down in the doobly-doo is the link to that profile if you do want to interact with me or reach out. I do try to answer questions and interact with people. That's, that's why I'm there. Otherwise, that's all I have for this week. I'm Mike, the Bowtie Writer. I will catch you all next time. Everyone, be kind to yourselves.